Um, we have with us today um, Adrian Howell from the University of Kentucky Libraries, who's going to talk about um, academic libraries as um, enablers to prepare graduate students for open scholarship. Hey, um, yeah, so my name is Adrian Howell. I'm the director of digital scholarship at the University of Kentucky Libraries. Um, today, I'm going to talk about how the library um, provide opportunities to educate graduate students about certain scholarly communication topics. So, um, oh, Adrian, if you want to go ahead and do the full screen mode here, um, I don't know if you're doing this from a PDF or from PowerPoint, yeah, we can PDF, see. Yeah. Okay, this will work. I just want to make sure if you have the option. Sorry. Um, yeah, so back in 2015, um, two librarians in uh, the Netherlands, they did a survey and they found out that, well, back then there were a lot of digital tools to help um, researchers, you know, do different types of uh, scholarly communication tasks. So um, now we are in 2020, so definitely there are more uh, than, you know, back then, um, 2015. So um, at the same time, you know, some research funding agencies, they are requiring researchers or uh, grantees um, to share the research data. Um, so as junior researchers, graduate students may find it overwhelming um, to uh, find out what digital tools are out there, um, which ones are you know, uh, most useful to them and how to comply with uh, requirements from uh, funding agencies. So actually uh, academic libraries in a, is in a very good position um, to offer um, education opportunities to support graduate students. So to find out uh, how, you know, uh, where to focus, um, you know, uh, focus on, focus our services on, then uh, the library looks at uh, the research process um, as a research life cycle. So um, the very first step is, um, you know, to find, uh, to, to get, uh, do the preparation work for your, for your research project. Um, so um, if some graduate students, they may be trying to, uh, find funding sources. Um, if they are going to submit a grant proposal, then um, they may want to know that actually some uh, funding agencies now uh, ask for the ORCID ID. So just now I realized that uh, somebody from ORCID talked about ORCID ID already, so you know what it is. And then at the same time, some funding agencies, they will ask graduate students to think about research data management. So um, it is becoming more important because some uh, funding agencies actually require uh, a data management plan as part of the um, uh, grant proposal. And then um, if they, if graduate students are going to share their research data down the road, then they have to know something about copyright and licensing. And finally, um, some graduate students, they may want to publish in open access journals so that their research findings are, you know, more available online. So um, in, that say, in that case, they, they have to know something about, you know, scholarly journal publishing and then um, kind of open access and why copyright matters. So um, the library thinks that, well, um, it's likely that graduate students will run into these issues, um, you know, or um, along the uh, research life cycle. So it was decided that we will just focus on these four areas and see how the library can support graduate students So um, the library has actually reached out to the graduate school and see if we could work together to um, put together a suite of uh, workshops for graduate students. Uh, unfortunately, the, the graduate school um, seemed to have different priorities. So um, it took a while, but eventually it, it, it didn't work out. So the library had to um, seek other opportunities to reach out to graduate students and you know, provide a support service. Um, so we, we were looking at um, kind of partners uh, on campus, and um, one of them is uh, the research office, uh, the, the Office of Research Integrity on campus. So uh, earlier this year, uh, my colleague and I um, did a presentation, and um, it is uh, for research, um, for junior researchers. Um, so uh, at, at, the, uh, at the workshop, um, we were talking about um, different tools. For example, um, if you have to do a data management plan, then there is DMP tool. Um, it is free 
for all researchers. And then for file organizing, um, we talk about uh, naming convention. And then long-term preservation is getting more important. So we talked about um, file format. And then for, research, uh, for sharing research data, um, there is the institutional repository. So we mentioned that as well. And then um, to let people reuse the data, then it's important to say something about open licensing. And of course, um, to make sure that the graduate students uh, will get credit for sharing research data, we mentioned ORCID ID and also DOI so that people can cite the, share, uh, the shared data. And then um, another partner that uh, the library works with um, is, um, well, individual colleges. So here at the University of Kentucky, uh, the library has worked with the College of Medicine and also the College of Nursing. Um, so uh, say, for example, at the College of Medicine, um, I, had, I had given uh, a workshop about scholarly journal publishing, um, especially about open access journals. Um, so um, I talked about you know, um, kind of provided an overview of scholarly journal publishing, uh, talked about copyright and author rights. And then um, there are two major types of open access that is gold and green. So I talked about the differences between them. And then um, nowadays, you know, people are concerned about, you know, selecting the, um, some reliable open access journals. So um, I went over some kind of evaluation criteria for um, evaluating, evaluating journals in general, but it is uh, applicable to open access journals. Um, and finally, if, um, you know, I also mentioned some resources so that graduate students uh, will be able to use them to um, select reliable open access journals. Uh, Adrian, I'm gonna interrupt you. I'm sorry, you've got like a, a one minute warning. Oh, okay. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, so I guess I will go over to the reflections um, so, um, after working with different parties, then um, we think that it's a, it is important to identify, um, you know, campus units that can work with us to reach out to graduate students. And sometimes maybe we just have to talk more with faculty members so that they understand why it's in, it is important to educate students about certain topics. And then if a graduate school has received uh, questions from students, then we ask them to refer them to, uh, to me or to the library. And finally, uh, the library has created online guides on these topics so that um, in case graduate students are looking, then um, they will find them. And then uh, looking forward, um, there are some guides for um, kind of further development. So um, the uh, LIBER, that is the, also known as the, the, the Association of European Research Libraries, they actually put together a model um, so this can be, this framework or this model can be used as a guide um, to help libraries to plan what kind of training um, can be provided to graduate students. And then there is also some external help, that is the Coventry's. Um, it, is an, it is a non-profit organization based in California and they uh, collaborate with um, higher education institutions to offer workshops uh, about software and data science. And finally, one more thing, um, Foster Portal. So it is um, uh, basically a website and it offers um, different suites of uh, resource, uh, training resources. And uh, here you can see there are four, they cover four different areas, open science or scholarship, uh, research data management, responsible research and innovation, and text and data mining. So um, looking forward, um, the library will be referring to these resources to uh, see how we can continue providing support to educate graduate students about scholarly communication, to uh, scholarly communication topics. Okay. Thank you so much, Adrian.